Welcome back to Filmonomics is Slated. I'm Steph Paterno. Now, we all know only too well the Byzantine process it is, putting your film together. So, over the last uh, couple of months, for our last two Filmonomics Talks events, we had one of the top completion bonders, uh, a former uh, distributor turned packaging agent, as well as bankers and sales agent, all of them on our panels to help answer one of the most commonly asked questions, which is how do you source material in the current market? What's your process? What's your calculus? Where do you look for it? Let's go hear what they had to say. Right, it's a golden age of in indie film when it comes to how cheap it is to make film right now. And what's great is there's a lot of new platforms and there's a lot of experimentation that's happening at a greater rate. So you do have the Netflixes and the Amazons of the world. So there, and these are places that can pay, you know, uh, maybe not in these insane amounts that you would see uh, you know, 15 years ago in, in the markets, like at a Sundance, but there are still homes for a lot of these films. The, the opposite side of this, though, is that when you have that many films in the market growing exponentially too, not just even like doubling or tripling every year. Uh, I'll give you an example. Like Magnolia would distribute 40 films a year, and I would watch maybe 800 my first year, by the time I left, it was more like uh, you know, 2,500. So you're calling through so many films. There's so many films out in the market, and even though there's more you know, distribution platforms and distribution outlets for it, uh, it's just becoming harder to sort of weed through that. I think the key to that and the future, and I've always really believed in this, it really does kind of come to curation. People are now starting to find, I think that the more sort of Netflix options there are, the more distributors there are who can sort of focus on their audience and the, the, the more you can use analytics to find people like, oh, there's this actor and I know that there's a group of people or this is a skateboarding doc, I know how to find these people. I think you're gonna find um, films be guided more towards the specific which in some ways you know, is a little sad where you're not, I don't think you're gonna get as many films that are kinda gonna blow out and, and cross a lot of different uh, demographics. I've been through a lot of different phases of foreign sales, having been in it for many, many, many years. And you know, it's, it's definitely changed. So there was, there was a time when it was just name driven um, and you could you know, make a movie with a lower level name and sell it foreign and all that because there was such a great video market, et cetera. I mean, now, in order to make you know a movie which is financially viable and attracts talent, you actually have to look at quality material. So um, I know that seems obvious for most people, but we now really look at material and script and director first and foremost before signing on to a film. Um, because we know a great script can attract great talent and we're all competing for the same talent. I mean, there's just, it's, it's the same list of like yeah. five guys, you know, who are a list. It's the same list of, you know, five guys who are like a minus. It, it's, the, it's all the same guys. We're all, all of us are competing for the same talent. Um, so, you know, we have to start at the beginning which is looking for great material that is going to inspire a director or actor um, and, 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 you know, that's where we're at with foreign sales now. It's not just about having a full package. It's about looking for a script, maybe something that's based on, you know, a true story that is, you know, not very well known, but really inspiring and cool. Like, you know, like a theory of everything, like an imitation game, you know, those kinds of movies that are going to attract talent. And, and trusted producers too. And trusted producers. Trusted producers. For sure. Definitely. Hugely important. It's kind of a strange thing because you always hear things about how the producer has uh, kind of lost their power and stuff. But in the independent film world, you know, the really good producers, like they'll come to our office and say, here's what I'm doing. And you know that they can put it together. Whereas some other people, they'll show up and you just know they have no chance at all of getting things done. So the really, like I said at the beginning, there are certain people who are just really good and what they do, and for people who are putting things together, you got to work with those people, because these are people who've kind of learned the hard way about, you know, what sources of money are real. You guys will meet people who will say, "I've got, you know, seventeen billion dollars or whatever," but the good, experienced producers understand the people who are real and the people who aren't, and you can spend a lot of time chasing down stuff that just is never going to happen. 
and a lot of people do that. They get caught up in that, and then things blow up, and and everybody gets unhappy. But but really, finding the right people, and and there are, you know, I don't know, probably twenty people that I can think of who are just people I know when they call and say, "This is what I'm doing." You 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 know that they'll be able to put it together. So so we get to weed through a lot of the bullshit. Congratulations. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> and uh and and really and, and he's absolutely right in what he says. We like we have to have an instinct about who we're working with and how much faith we have in this person to actually put something together because otherwise we could spend an incredible amount of time going over cast lists and you know, even backing offers to cast and all of that. And if this producer, A, if he's not bondable by him, you know, we can't get the movie made. Um, and, if, you know, and if we, and if he can't get this cast and, you know, he, he won't bank it, so, and he won't represent it. So we, <laughs> we have to go through, we have to, you know, we have to trust our gut as far as who our partners are, which is why we generally work with, you know, a lot of the same partners, producers, and people that we know, because otherwise you could be working on projects for two, three years and just constantly on the phone advising about cast and advising about budgets and directors and all that. So, yeah, you have to be very particular about who you work with. A lot of it, too, is instinct and gut and just being around and working with the other experts and, and whatever team you have. Um, you know, it's a lot of these things are... are but before it gets to that stage, though, there's a natural form of sort of trial and, and, and error. So if you love a script, which is where it can start and where I think a lot of films should start, or a director, the minute you start taking it out to a couple of produce, creative producers and financiers and international agents, to start, you'll, that's where you start to get the water level on the material alone, what, the, you know, what people's instincts are saying, what their passion's saying. If you have an actor, it becomes a little more easier because you have something bankable. I mean, I don't know if you agree, but it's gone full circle it's about how great the script is or if it's 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 an inspiring story that people want to you know hear like the theory of everything or imitation game or all these movies that have been like recently nominated people in order to attract cast in order to attract directors it actually has to be an inspiring story that people want to see you know, and, and occasionally there's like whiplash or whatever that gets independently financed because this director is so amazing in a room that people want to give him money. But I was, if I were an independent or a producer, I would start with material. Basically, the economics of it don't work like they used to. Now you need not only a strong cast and a strong director, you also need a strong stri script. You even need a strong producer. You need everything to be perfect uh, and you need the right budget. Um, so, so it's, it's becoming increasingly challenging for us to find the right package that fits, um, um, for foreign sales, um, that is economically viable for the banks to come in and invest in and, and, and investors, et cetera. But again, there are more investors looking for projects than there are projects that are financeable. And that's, that's the reality of the market today. Well, the... Two key takeaways from what the panelists had to say was really, number one, your script. The script is what will attract the talent and get them excited to begin with. But number two is the producer. The producer whose track history makes you believe that they can deliver, that they will be able to negotiate and close deals. Because closing deals, whether it be with talent, whether it be with financiers, whether it be with the sales agents and distributors later, really comes down with the salesmanship, the maturity, the vision, and they're really their tenacity to deliver the quality and convince people to go along with them on this journey. If you get those two things right, you're on your way. Well, that's it for now. Uh, we will have more about these last uh, couple of talks in the next couple segments. Until then, don't forget to subscribe. Over and out.